Welcome to the Low Code Show. I'm your host, Russell Youngblood, and this is episode five, where we will be building out some web screens in our application. If you have not been following along, you can back up to episode one and find any of the materials that you need to build this application in the comments of episode one. So we'll build upon our data model and the application that we've already built here by adding some functionality to the pre-built screen. So if you're ready, let's do it. Okay, before we get started customizing these screens, let's step back and take a look at what we've already built in the application. Notice that on our main page, we have a number of different products we can sort by price, and this screen was built from one of the OutSystems templates. I can click on the products link, and it takes me to a list of the products, as well as customers and the shipping companies. Now, each of these screens has a list of either products, customers, or shipping companies. And you should be able to click on a link, and that takes you to the detail screen of each of these. So I'm going to go back over to the home screen. And then in this video, we'll continue to customize these screens as we need to in our application. OK, back in Service Studio, the IDE for development, you can see all of our screens here under the interface layer. And real quick, I'm going to switch to the data layer. And let's just take a look at our entity diagram just to refresh your memory on the different entities that we've created for this application. So here's what we have so far, and in this video, we're going to focus the next steps on working with this orders entity. So back to the interface layer, I'm going to double click on the main flow, and this is where we, of course, can trigger the accelerator that builds out master detail screen sets very, very quickly. So with the main flow selected, I'll go back over to the data layer, drag and drop the orders entity out to the flow, and then, of course, it's going to trigger that accelerator in out systems to build out two different screens. One screen will contain a list of the orders. We can double click on that screen, open it up, and we can see the template there. And then if we go back, we can, of course, click on the order detail screen and we can see the detail screen that should map to each one of these orders. So with those two new screens created, I'm going to click the one click publish button. We'll go ahead and publish that up to the server. And now we have all of the screens that we really need for this particular application. So in the next couple of steps, what we'll do is we will continue to build upon these screens and customize these screens in the application. OK, for the next steps, what I think I'll do is go ahead and focus on the order screen. And I'm going to make some basic changes here. So first of all, I noticed that the column header here says uh, customer ID. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Uh, we will change that to customer name. And then there is a link here on the customer name that links us to the order detail screen. And I'm not too fond of that. What I would prefer is maybe an icon. So I'm going to choose right click and choose unlink to unlink that. And then click on the column to the furthest right hand side of the table. And ease up to the top, click on the Add New Column to the Right icon, and we'll add this column over here to the right. And this is where we're going to add a custom icon to link over to the Order Detail screen. So real quick, in the toolbox, I'm going to do a search for the icon widget. I'll drag and drop that into the new column. And then we have this window that will allow us to search for an icon. So I think the pencil icon would be a good idea for this, because that's what we're going to click on to edit the order detail. And then we will right click on that new icon, choose the link to option, and then link it on over to the order detail screen from the flyout menu. So you can see that here. And of course, we're going to need to pass over the order ID so that when we get to the detail screen, we know exactly which order that we're editing. So I'll click the one click publish button. We'll go ahead and publish those changes. And uh, very quickly, our order list screen is ready to go. Now what we'll do is go ahead and start to work a little bit more on the order detail screen. So I'll navigate to that screen by double clicking on it under the interface layer. And here's where we're going to go ahead and modify the screen so that there's a little bit more detail about the actual order itself. So at this point, what we want to do is add another form to the screen that will allow us to add the line items. So we'll go ahead and delete the image there. And then we'll need to go ahead and add a new variable to the screen. So I'm going to right click on the order detail screen, add a local variable. 
And uh, let's see, we'll just give that variable the name of order line. And then we're going to have to make sure that the data type is set to order line as well. And that should take care of that. Now we'll go over to the toolbox over to the left, drag the form widget out to the container. And then we can simply drag and drop the new variable that we've created into that form, and it will actually create the form objects that we need. So there's one extra here at the top that we don't need. I'll right-click and choose Delete to delete that one, and then also delete the associated label. So very quickly, we have the form that we need to capture, the product, and then the quantity or number of items that would be ordered associated with that product. So that looks pretty good. Next step, I'm going to go to the toolbox, drag and drop the table widget down to the bottom of the screen, and here's where we will show a running list of the different order items. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add some margin top, maybe about 50 pixels at the top, so that there'll be a little bit of space between the forms and the actual table itself. And now, to go ahead and add some data to the table, we'll right-click and choose the option to fetch data from database. And so we'll need to create an aggregate, which will produce a list to drive this table. So within that aggregate, of course, we're going to need the order line entity. We'll go ahead and drag that in. And we're going to add a filter real quick. So click on the Filter tab. Go ahead and click the Add Filter button. And I'm going to use the visual tree down at the bottom to build this particular uh, filter. And what I'm looking for is the order ID from the order line entity. And I want to make sure that that's equal to the input parameter order ID. So you can type this in the window, or uh, I find it's just faster to use the tree down at the bottom left. So back to the order detail screen. Very quick and easy way to do this is just drag and drop the product ID data point or entity attribute over to the table. Now we have the product. And then, of course, what we want to do is add the quantity. So the idea is that as you add these products to the order and the quantity, it should refresh the table down at the bottom, and we can see a running list of the products and the quantity of those products as they're added to the order. So this looks pretty good. Now I think what I want to do is go ahead and work on the action associated with this. We'll change the button name here to Add Item, and then double-click on the button. That will open up the flow so that we can begin to work on the action flow for this particular action. Now this action is not that complicated. I'm going to move the end node down just a bit. And first we're going to need to drag and drop an assigned statement and we'll need to set the variable to a value. Now, I like to use this little window. You can click on the small icon, and once again, you can use the tree to drill down and find the item that you're looking for. And usually, for the value, you'll be able to find it in the dropdown if it's in scope. So if it's not in scope, you won't see it in the dropdown, but it should be there. You should be able to find what you're looking for. And now we're going to go back over to the data layer and use one of our entity actions. The one we're looking for is the create order line. Of course, that's going to create the data in the table. We'll set the source to the variable order line, and then we just have a couple of other steps to complete here. Once this is done, what I think I'd like to do is, first of all, refresh the table so that we can see that new order line item in the table at the bottom. And then it's probably a good idea if we give our user some indication of success. And to do that very quickly, we can just use a message widget. So you can type the message here in that little small window, or if you'd like, you can open up the larger window and go ahead and type the message. It must be in quotes. And then maybe we want to change the type. I think we could change this to a success message, and that would be best, though. So it'll be green. And uh, that's all we need for this action. I'll go ahead and click the one-click Publish button, and we'll publish up the changes. Now, there's a couple of small changes that I would like to make to the Order Detail screen. So I'm going to navigate back to that screen under the Interface layer. And one thing to note is that this screen will be used on a couple of occasions. Number one, if we need to edit an order and add items to the order, we'll use this screen. But this screen is also used if we need to create a new order in the database. So in that case, we wouldn't really be adding items to the order unless that order actually was already existing in the database. So 
what I would like to do is I would like to add a condition to this form so that it's only viewable if indeed we are updating and adding items to uh, an order that exists. So I'm going to wrap that in an if condition and then what we want to do is set this if condition so that if the order ID is not equal to null identifier then we will be able to see this form. And then I'm going to drop down and do the same exact thing with the table. I'll just select the table in the tr widget tree, choose enclose in if statement, open that condition, very quick and easy. Double click on order ID, choose the different from operator, and you can choose the null identifier from the drop down here. So once again, your choice, you can type all of this if you like to code in this window, you can do it. But everything you really need here should be in scope in the lower left-hand corner of this window. So I'm going to go ahead and click Done. This is exactly what we need for this screen. I will click the one-click Publish button to publish the changes. And now we should be able to edit our orders and add products to the order from this screen. Okay, now that we've completed all of the steps that we need to add orders and edit those orders in the application, let's test it out in the browser. Simply click the Test in Browser button and then navigate over to the order screen. And here you can see I've already added a couple of ordered orders. So if I want to, I can go ahead and begin to edit those orders. Or if I'd like to, I can go ahead and add a new order. We can choose from the customer dropdown, choose a shipping company that will ship our order. Uh, select a date from the date picker and save the order and then we can begin to immediately add items to that order. Here we can see all of the different products. We can set a quantity and add the item and then we should immediately see that item added to the table and then we should also see the success alert at the top of the browser. And this wraps up episode 5 on The Low Code Show. Hey, if you like what you see, Please subscribe, Twitter.com, The Low Code Show, YouTube, The Low Code Show, and of course, Facebook.com, The Low Code Show. Stay tuned and come back soon for more video tutorials on the best platform for building mobile and web applications, OutSystems.